so klein is nie. Maar ik ken ook, uh, ik heb het al gezien vandaag, maar ik ken mij als die Toulouse Le Trek van die Vlaamse literatuur. Dus ik sta een beetje recht naar voor die introduction. Maar ik heb zo, het is ook eerbewijs, ik heb zo proud dat ik hier kan wees. En dat ik een vriendin, wat ik nou, hoe lang is het nou Marianne? 27 jaar, 28 jaar, denk ik, wat ons voor elkaar kennen. Het is nou die 28 jaar lang wat ik van haar zie, jij moet hier die story van jouw leven schrijven. Dat is eindelijk zo. En jij weet ook, als een een schrijver die andere schrijver introduceert, wat normaal dan gebeurt is, dat die eerste schrijver, wat die andere schrijver introduceert, net praat over homself. En net praat over zij werk. Dat ziet op die zin. Nou, ik is een groot traditionalist. Maar niet vandaag niet. Niet vandaag niet. Ik wil net praten over Marianne en haar... Uh, Zij is nu zo so busy. We kennen haar als de 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 hardest working uh, woman in the South African show business and uh, journalism. We know. So I'm. This is one of the few occasions we can still talk. Is that we are together on a on a floor? It's not warm, but it's, it sounds nice, ne? Uh, <laughs> so Marianne, kan ik nou voor jou vragen? Eindelijk. Uh, je hebt voor mij gezien dat jij uh, misschien uh, eindelijk Joburg toe moet gaan. Wat ons gaan nou? Eerst praat een beetje over, over jouw rol nou. Ik heb het geweerd altijd dat je dit zou worden. Jouw rol hier mijn nou. Rol. Jou, kan ik, ik eerst praten over die stoelen? Want mijn ma, dit is belachelijke, lelijke stoelen. Ja, dit is een kom. Dit is een kom. Ik heb geen maas mal geweest voor jullie stoelen. Ja. Maar er was een hele committee die decided dit moet be de chairs van haar conversatie. Dit is gewoon bij Maas ook een stoel hebben gehad. Dit is niet op zijn stoel. Maar ons voelt thuis toch? Ja, ons voelt echt thuis. Maar voel je nog thuis in Zuid-Afrika? Ja, ik voel thuis. 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 
Vallen geluisterd en zij weet was net vol van die klein, die speelgoed wat je krijgt in die casino. Zij die karren en zij draaien, hij heeft brand geslaan, hij heeft homself geskok met de ding, een hond toen gebijt, een boord wat bij zijn hand, hij is gestaan, het is gesteel. Je weet in zo, ik ging om wouden, ik schrijf en ik stel niet de mensen belang. Zo wat wat met jou gebeurde, dus ik heb die kans gehad om om met gewone mense te praat en oor hulle te skryf. Een man wat op self in die brand gesteek in, in, die, in die middel van sepen, wat so ingehaard op het in die winkel en gespring het in die, in die, in die, in die, die, die buttons wat die het met ijs. Die met, met, en toe gaan ek naar die Tijgerberg hospitaal, ek speel toe ek is een dokter om daar in te kom. Um, so ek en ek denk dit is deel van... Weet, en dit is nie die histories wat in die boek is? Nie, nee, 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 dit is nee, nee, een hele nieuwe boek van sy eigen. Ja, jy moet ook. Maar dit is my mede mens, ek moest oor hulle geskryf. Maar hoekom is jy, want as ek die boek gelees het, was... Ons het erover gepraat al. Ek het, uh, vir my was die boek belangrijk, nie omdat het net jou story was, wat ek van geweet het, is at, at the same time, een totale persoonlijke verhaal, maar een universele verhaal, wat jy nie kan verzin nie. Want at the same time, het was vir my die eerste keer dat ek een boek lees, wat ek kan vir myself een bykie bepaal, wat het means, uh, van ons leeftijd te wees, en misschien opgegroeid, uh, om hier op te groei, uh, in, in Zuid-Afrika. En ik heb gewonnen, dat was baie drugs, in die boek. Was die, het was meer seks, dat het my verbaas, meer seks, maar baie drugs was dan Marian. En hoe het jy dan gekom, na, all, all of a sudden, jy become a journalist, jy het gejol en gejol, en dan, uh, hoe, hoe het dit gebeur, dat jy, was dit een uh, ontdekking vir jou? Deel van die dag ook was vir my om te ontsnap uit Pretoria. Um, wat ek kan nou stem. Ek het groot geword in een boot. Dit is nog altijd so, he, mense. Ja, 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 ja. Want hy was een, 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 een migrant kind, tussen een klomp boerekinders, wat so, jy weet, met boenskoppies en, en niks schoene rondgeloop, en dit is werkersklaskinders, wat glad nie van ons gehou nie. Wat baie lekker is, as jy kind is, want dan kan jy nou in elkaar bekleid. Ok, jy gaan nou um, een stukkie lees daarover. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Yeah. This is not English. Yeah. Verstaan you English? You can see the way that my dirty secret. I have a very good friend these days. Okay, so this is a little bit of the description. Your mother is a sea kaffer. The boy with the close cropped hair and bare feet yelled in his thick Afrikaans accent as I glided past on my brother's chopper bicycle. I had grown, grown accustomed to the insults. Dutch people were car scorper, British people were soap pillar, literally salt dicks suggesting they had one foot in England and the other in South Africa, their dongs dangling in the ocean in between. We in turn call Afrikaans kids rock spiders. Uh, but the special epithet, epithet of Kaffir, a vicious South African racial slur routinely and casually used to refer to black South Africans was meant to cut deep. Portuguese immigrants were viewed with a special scorn. It was part of the political atmosphere these kids breathed, which in retrospect, considering the Brutabal's attitude towards Latin immigrants, was not surprising. Not only because of these not only because these immigrants were mostly working class, but also because many Portuguese colonies that surrounded South Africa, Mozambique and Angola, had chosen to integrate with the regional populations, and their men married local women. I had not heard, however, of a Portuguese woman marrying a black man. Um, when it came to the obsessive notion of racial purity and white supremacy in South Africa, this was a cardinal sin and unforgivable. Most of the time, Greasy Pora was the best this the South African English-born, uh, English-speaking kids in our neighborhood could come up with. They were just as ignorant, I thought, concerned more with the fact that I had stolen my brother's awesome bicycle and was now showing it off. So that is that is what van Barak myself is an English-speaking the wit South Afrikaners in Afrikaans-speaking the wit South Afrikaners as you need mingle must see the pavement special. Um and need deal gevoel het van van enige van daai van daai groepe mense. Um so die mense in ons woonweek was mense uit Holland, mense uit Duitsland, mense uit Griekenland, Portugal eh wat daar kom werk het. Um so ja, dit is ek weet ek eers besef het ehm is ons ontsnap aan aan Pretoria en daar later ook school. Wel, as jy rondgestap het en gekyk het wat gebeur het, kon jy sien wat aangaan. En ek denk omdat ek, uh, because I was on the receiving end of, of uh, a tiny bit of that discrimination, ek het besef, die kinders verstaan nie my ma nie, of hulle verstaan nie uh, um, migrante nie. En my wonderlijke vriend Rian van de Westhuis, en wat my Afrikaanse vriend was, ek was mal oor hom, het altyd die kaart oopgemaak op sy maase bol en klo, dining room table, en dan wees hy so na Engeland, en wees hy so na Afrika, en dan sê vir my, kijk hoe klein is Engeland, en hoe terug gaan soen toe. 
uh, toe sê ek van, ja, maar ek is, nie, ek is nie eindelijk Engels nie. Maar hy kon nie verstaan, ja, hy was bang vir die drie kaas, wat Pieter Druk is altyd van gepraat het, dit is katholieke, uh, communiste en die ander kaas, wat ek nie wil graag weer wil, wil oor sê nie, maar so, so um, my ervaring, um, of ek dink wat my uh, insight gegeet, was omdat ek uh, buitenstaander was, mm-hmm. en op een sekere manier, um, I was I, I was targeted in a way, um, but it, I didn't mind it because I could survive because I was white. But it was that notion that I'm trapped in this. Why did my father bring us here? This, why to a country where there was going to be some sort of violence happening? Couldn't I please leave? Could I go somewhere else? So I went into uh, Bob Marley and in Dachau. And it was made it so much easier. Who come? Who come from near? At your then. Die, die journalistieke en ook, nou ja, die woord ontdek als een vervangmiddel van die dag en, en is het, of misschien dat jij nog altijd op Mali en die ander? Waar het vandaan kom, is ek het die hele tijd die mense om my gevra, nie net oor die, die wat ek gesien het in my oor van mense sit op een grasperk en dan kom iemand en, en jaag mense weg soos een hond. Dan vraag ek vir my ma, hoekom doen hulle dit? Hoekom mag zwart mense die daar sit nie? Dan sê my ma, wat in Portugal groot geworden het onder Salazar, en haar broers was communiste en toegesluid, so my ma was baie bang vir die politiek. Het altijd vir my gesê, hulle kan alles hoor wat jy sê. Dit is nie ons land nie, uh, bly stil, uh, jy gaan seer kry. Jy gaan nie aan met die hele saak. En ek dink dit was deel van, ek, ek, toe ek journalist geword het... Um, Weet jy nog die oomblik, die dag, dat jy gedenk het, this, this, this is now me. Dit het baie doen toe ek die boek geskryf het, toe ek ook op my fiets staan, soos my pa gestaan het in Berlijn in 1938, en gekyk hoe daar commissie wens mense ingooi, omdat dit in die hele pasboeken het nie. Um, en ek het toe besluit, ek wil die waarheid, ek wil eind van, wat, wat gaan Annie so? Allemaal om my is benauwd, al die wit mense sê, hierdie zwart mense is een bedreiging, maar hoekom? Ja. Wat gaan aan? En niemand kon eindig vir my verduidelik, allemaal het al vir my gesê, want dit is net hoe dit is. Weet jy nog die allereerste keer wat hy iets geskryf het, wat jy denk, dit is, is nou belangrijk, nie net vir my nie? Wie? Met jy, weet jy nog wat? wat? Ba- ja, het eerst in my later, latere jare, ek was een compleet Philistijn geweest. Um, okay. So ek het, ek het um, 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 toegang tot die, 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 die landskap van die mind and the soul and the intellect was offered to me through music. Mm-hmm. Because, um, also in die boeken wat beskikbaar was, Het was ook verband, of in ons huis was daar maar een kamp natuurlijk op die, op die bokraak. Ek kon ja. altijd daar gaan lees, maar uh, dit, ek, dit, dit was, dit was in, 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 in bruin papier toegedraai en ek het het een dag daar gekry, het is van gelos, so laat, het is een slang. En, die, en uh, wat maak jy dan nou hier? Ja. Um, so, dit was muziek, dit was Bob Marley, wat, wat uh, toe ek daar sang hoog gehoor het, waar hy praat oor Suid-Afrika, was dit my channel gewees, um, Ek uh, kom praat ons later oor jou pa, vir my is die groot ontdekking van die boek is, en dit is vir my ook baie special, is jou ma, die rol van jou ma, omdat jou ma het beroerd gehad, het haar taal verloor soos my ma het gehad, ek, ek, ek het die boek geskryf daarover, spraakloos, wat, wat prachtig vertaal is, is Daniel Hugo, so dit is ook iets wat ons verbindt een bekkie, maar ek, ek het het geweet, maar net as ek jou boek lees, dan het ek besef, dat dit, uh, Doe die moedertaal wat vir jou meer problematisch, wat jou ma uh, was, ja, het, het, het nie die as soos my ma gehad, toneel, literatuur, taal, maar was baie belangrijk vir jou, en ek het maar eerst in die boek besê, jou ma het op bepaalde oomblik, een man wat jou probeer aanrand het, sy het omgemoerd, ne? Ja, ja, vertel een bykie, dat was vir my een van die belangrijkste scènes van die boek, het was het snaaks ook nog, ne? Maar die ding van die Portugese ma, dit is soos die Joodse ma, en my ma het vir my, besef ek nou in my ouwe jare, vir, in my self, in my, in my diepe self, een panic room geskep. Um, sy was ongeletterd, sy kon nie lees, sy kon nie skryf, sy was een skoonmaker vir verreik wat mense in Engeland, en ons is hier in Zuid-Afrika, en ek en my broer was haar projekte gewees, ons was die mooiste, moest wonderlikste kinders in die wereld, al het ek gedreip op school, het my ma nou gaan loop en wees vir die mense die report in, 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 in die woordbeer, en ek sê, mama, ek het, die weet ek, het is so goed gedoen op school, en ons sê, I don't care, I know you're clever. Um, <laughs> maar wat ek ook abs- absoluut geweet van my ma, is dat, uh, en ek het nou eerst hier ontdek, toe ek ma geworden, is, sy sou, sy, she would kill a bull for me, she would absolutely kill a bull for me, en daar was verskye oomblik, en dit is ook in die boek, want mense vraag toch vandag, weet, hierdie, hierdie stories van mans wat meisies molesteer, is dit nou een liewe ding, en toe ek nou die boek begin skryf, onthou ek, dat was drie of vier, jy weet, geleentede, of meer, 
waar als jongvrouw op straat, want ik was een tomboy geweest, die weet dit, ik natuurlijk mijself wonderbol gemaakt, was dit zo so, so in die wildpad te, te loop, maar omdat mijn ma uh, vir my soos dit een sterk selfbeeld gegeet, kon ik dat hier vir, en een van, het, een van die goed het gebeur, die Portugiese café, wat toch wel lekker was vir my, want die oom wat daar was, het my geroep om, om, om achter die toonbank in te kom, en as jy kind is en jy wil sweets eet en jy is in jou shorts, dan gaan jy moes, nie? en hy kom druk homself hier achter my, en ek voelde iets, en ek weet toe, dit is nie sy asma pomp nie, maar hier is iets aan die gang wat nie lekker is nie, maar ek gaan vir my ma vertel, en ek had het gegeis toe, en ek sê toe vir my ma, en ek het geweet hoe sy het gaan reageer, want my ma was soos een, soos een leeuwwijf hier oor haar kinders, ek sê toe vir my ma, ma, Mr. De Santos at the cafe, call me behind the counter, en dan die, jyre, en dit was nie eers, ek, dit, die woorde was nie uit my mond, en, en my ma is daar by die pad op, soos een her, en sy skree, en ek stap achter haar, so een paar meter achter haar aan, en sy kom toe by die winkel, en ek dink meneer, de Santos kon haar hoor al van die hoek af, wat sy, want jy doen dit nie aan een Portugese meisie nie, dit is, jy weet, dit is een ding van Latijnse mense, jy sal ook sê in Turkije, da, jy weet, dat Turkijse mans dink Europese vrouwen is een easy go, jy weet, dit is allemaal porn meisies, jy weet, western women are easy, maar jou eie vrouwens doen jy dit nie aan, en Portugese is jy selfde, jy doen dit nie aan een Portugese meisie nie, en as, my ma, het by die deur aangekom, en vir hom in Portugees begin skree, dat ek kon sien, hy was so bang, hy probeer uitkryp achter die winkel, um, was, en jy weet, en naderhand sê sy vir hom in Engels, so dat ek kan hoor, jy dat sê ek, I kill you, I kill you, en dit was so fantastisch, om te weet, my ma is op my kant, en ek stap toe achter haar huis toe, dit het toe weer later gebeur, toe een jong man uit Angola begin werk in die selfde winkel, um, en ek het ingegaan om iets te kijk in die chappies, of ek, ek moest daar winkels in die reek, vandag toe is daar nog, so, ek wil graag so een winkel oopmaak, met one ply toilet paper en a three ply neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> met soke vruchte wat niemand koop nie, en met alles wat dit dier, okay, okay. die stof van... Hier die ene geweldige vrou, sy verloor haar taal, ja. en vir my was het, 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 ek weet wat dit beteken nou uit, uit eie ervaring, maar ook daarvoor, as jy nou kyk na haar, die eenzaamheid, die alleenheid wat sy moet gehad het hier in die, in die land, en in een family, ok, she was proud of, of, of you too, maar die, die, dit, dit, vir my is dit die, een van die groot onderstromen in die boek is die blues vir die ma. Hmm. Kan, jy, kan, jy, kan jy dit, dit verstaan, of is dit, is dit iets wat ek nou uitvind? Maar? Nee, um, interessant. Dus jy denk nou oor jou ma. Nou, my ma is, as a feminine presence, she's quite absent in my life, because she, uh, what she put in place, is solid and there and will always be there and it, it, it sustains me in the worst possible times and I'm grateful to her for that. But my ma het ook groot geword in a land waar jy nie kon praat nie so, dit is ironies en sy kon nie skryf nie, ek het hier die obsessie, obsessie met boeken lees en boeken, my broer ook, so my hele huis is vol boeken en ek wonder of dit haar uitleving is van wat sy vir my wel gehad het dat ek skryf, ek het enig gesit in die center for the book, I was invited there, where every book that's been published in South Africa is there, and I was on a panel, and I looked up in that moment, and I thought she would be so proud, mm -hmm. she would love this. I think um, so, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think she so. would be. So my mother is, my mother looked like Elizabeth Taylor, if you look in the book, you'll see, so it's a beeld school of It's really so, the pictures are in the book, and you can see it. When I was young, I, would, it's cool. I look like Elizabeth yeah. Taylor. <laughs> Mar, uh, there is, there is by a, but, but, uh, a beautiful woman. Yeah, beautiful. but she's in a way quite formless for me, and quite uh, apart from the extreme love, which is quite narcissistic, because all I can feel is what she gave me. Yeah. And when I was 21, she had the stroke and lost her language. She had all the time and she had the word and word and word and in how long has she been learning? 14 years now. Yeah, 14 years in a role stool, what she could walk or she could talk. And it um, in, was interesting to try. She could precisely tell me, it tells, smells enough. I told myself, I've got no trouble understanding you because you call everything get together. So as she was, she was like, get together, get As she wanted to say, get together, get together, get together. And then she said, it smells enough. I've always understood what she would say. For me, there's an immediate link between that uh, strong, silenced woman. Uh, in the land you are so, uh, yeah, 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 you genit so van taal. Is, is, is there iets wat jy denk dat jy kompenseer dit? Perhaps, yes. perhaps psychodynamically, yeah. Yeah. and I'm really hoping that before I am rendered speechless by a stroke, which would be terrible, that I've said all I need to say, <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to tattoo cry, but uh, you must yourself be prepared that they'll just so lose on the bed pan for hours, <laughs> and uh, or you're not in the toilet, you're not in the toilet lost, but bring your phone in. So I think I'll get it to S and M. 
Want dan kan je het misschien geniet, die ongemakkelijkheid. Van, je, weet, je kan niet lopen, maar nou, hier zit je op die toilet en hier is het kinders wat je hebt trek en hier is het oude ding wat je hebt gebruikt om te lopen. So, um, dit, ja, ik denk dat aftakeling van, van die fysiek van het mens, uh, so, ek het samen met mijn pa daar pad gelopen met mijn ma, waar hij ongelooflijk wel gezorg het, uh, dat het baie min en gemeen gaat, en daarna moet het vir hom zorg. Ja. Um, dit is niet een rol dat ik verwacht het nie, maar is vandaag kan ik zien dat was een van die meest belangrijkste dingen in mijn leven. Behalve Kom praat ons nou oor jou pa. Uiteindelijk, ja. ek sal nie vir jou sê, het vir my gevraag, hoekom denk jy, en ek het nou die, die, die boek laat lees aan mensen in Holland, jy het vir my gesê, dat is Duitse journalist wat uh, gepraat het met jou, wat die boek gelees het. Ek het altijd geweet, nie net omdat ons vrienden is nou, maar die story wat jy he, probeer nou te focus, dat is een so dit is een nazi, wat een pilot en een engineer is, wat prisoner of war wordt, wat in, in, in Londen leeft, wat die met die dochter van een communistische familie trouw, hulle kom hier toe. En hulle krijgt weer van ons dag. Hy bly, hy ons het ontmoet, dit was een distinguished, a very nice person, but a nazi. En op die eind van sy leven krijg hy twee zwarte kleinkinders, hy word verlief op die, die twee kleinkinders wat hem tot de hero maak in die, in die old pension en zo. Hier is een story wat jij niet kan verzinnen. He. Dus je kan het niet, kan het niet bedenken nie. dat, dat die grote twee continenten, die twee grote communisme en uh, nazisme, dat het in een familie samengebracht wordt naar uitgerekend Pretoria. He. En waar dan hier die twee meisjes op die eind. En dat is nog een story in die story is. Ons het nou voor één seconde denk ik met vier van ons. Mijn mijn husband en hij wat er zit, jou he, Glorious Glennis. Uh, uh, ons het vir, vir ons drieën dan vir ons gaan saam kinders maak uh, nee op die natuurlijke manier nee nee nee, nee ja, ons meng van ja kijk ons neemt een uh, saaikie en ons neemt uh, wat is een eikie sorry en een saad en ons meng dit en as daar een gorgeous blond uh, 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 angel uitkomt dan is het my kind as het, as het klein is het er al bril en is het er neesin uh, maar dus luckily you didn't do that and uh, uh, I think uh, we didn't do that maar als jij de hele story saam neemt, dit is, dit, dit is een movie. Actually, ik heb het altijd geweerd, maar als jij hier die boek leest, dit moet ooit, uh, uh, denk ik, uh, een flik wordt. En uh, toch is het voor jou, denk ik, een periode, een tijd geduurd, voor jij daarvan oortuig was dat dit, dat dit zo was. Ik denk dat als je in die als je enige persoon nou hier nie gehoor vrouw oor hulle leven, sit hulle een story, en dat is altijd vir my interessant, als ik met mensen praat, en op een manier het ek gedink, wel, dat is net, dat is net my story, dit is, in, in ek het net tyd gevat, dankzij jou, om dit te skryf, uh, but what, what intrigues me about the story is, what is it, uh, what are the currents that form us as people, how much of us are ourselves, how much of us is us, and how much of us is the politics, the ideology, the, the geographical space we find ourselves in, And I tried to find George, the man. Is your pal? Yeah, Georg. Um, did it 30 years and he was verschrikkelijk bekleed with baie dinge, politiek specifiek. Maar ek het, ek kon, toe ek jonger was, kon ek, en toe ek na, nadat ek na die World of War gekyk het, en gesien het, die Holocaust, het ek, kon ek nie, I felt contaminated. I felt that my, I was of these people who did this thing. They were genetically a part of me, and as a younger person with the frontal lobes not yet settled, had then decided my father was the embodiment, perhaps was even Adolf Hitler, escaped from the bunker, had a face transplant in Argentina, and was now in my house. And here I was, uh, you know, with this Nazi, yeah. and in so doing... But what you had always sought on photos. I get uh, super yeah. uh, Whenever I watch the World of War, whenever I look at a book about the Holocaust or the, or the war, or Berlin, yeah, or stuff, I, look, I look for my father. I I look for him in the crowd and I always never find him, thank God, with, you know, Hitler touching his ear or Google's kissing him full on the lips or whatever. <laughs> but, but for me it became an obsession that I was from these people, this perpetrating class. And but you had what, the discussions with him about it. I did. Eventually, did it, well, it started off in the very, I, I was, I attacked him in the beginning and, and I realized as I've got older that in a way by casting him as, as, as the, the dark side, I didn't have to question myself. I was I was blameless. I was helping the fight in South Africa. I'm, you know, I could escape examining myself and my own role in this country, whether it's tacit or explicit. There were, there were so many moving uh, parts in the book. I saw a part of the noem that you yourself. What you is also hard for yourself. That you see, I read now the the brief here. 
and actually he wasn't such an asshole. He tried to really help me. Uh, the other of, of the end of the book, uh, this is such a movie and it's a bit of a joke. As I see for the for the nurses, yeah, my pa is a is a soldier, and I see eindelijk na all the years say, yeah, but for the wrong side. Mm. So I see all the the the, the stories and the discussions so near. Well, was nice what was what what fascinated me to start off with, and interestingly enough, Helen Ziller's family uh, were all on the right side of history. So there's something about being on the wrong side of history and what collateral damage that causes over generations. And there's no way I can. I can transmit this collateral damage to my children. It doesn't belong to them. That history, that burden of what it is. But my parents and, and our parents' parents in the 20th century, which was really stupid century because my parents, my mother smoked in the car with the windows rolled up and people were eating MSG and he was my bifrood getan met brickfluid. He met him to the conquer. He met him and that. So the 21st century was a pretty stupid century, but um, I was really intrigued, but what is it that gives somebody a political conscience? What, or what triggers in a, a group of people who are part of a perpetrating class? What, why does one person in that family say, I will not go along with this? I, I refuse. I will not watch those uh, synagogue, synagogues burning. It's very easy to ask that question when you're not in history, when you're not trapped in history. And it was only when I became trapped in my own history in South Africa, in apartheid South Africa, as a white South African, because no matter that I'm gay, that I'm marginal in that way, that I'm a recovering Catholic, that I'm a le that I'm what else? Uh, uh, yeah, I've got immigrant parents and various other whatever. The one overriding factor benefited me, and I sit here today because of that. And a lot of people get angry with me when I say that, but that's because I'm white. I went to school for nothing. I was, you know, the, the world is my oyster. Uh, there was no idea in my brain that I wasn't going to succeed. And so, so despite all of those other marginal issues, but for me it was about discovering, you know, uh, why do we make the decisions yeah. we make or don't make the decisions but we make. But I extend the mal so on the, and I look full, the pain in the book is, Becky, that he the patriarchal man, uh, he had a broer, a uh, broer, he gets his work, he goes to university, too. you are not supposed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pain, but I think that, uh, but it's not net my, die, die, die amateur psychologist in me. So you have your man what you what that all verloor. Mm. And that you, anderzijds, that you a patriarchal man that you probeert to te onderdruk and your role will give. And you have die twee zaken samengeneem. And you have gebakkelijk met hem. You have you blijvend gevecht met hem. Want you have the end gedink. Dus was er a punt dat jou pa eindelijk die besef het wat hij wat hij betekent het in die rol voor jou. Ik denk zo, dat je kan niet tot dat besef komen als je aan een praat voor iets. Ja. In in in, ik denk ook die boek is bij te doen met. Uh, how can you love somebody when they're? Uh, well, you have to love them when they're at their worst. You've got to keep working at something. So you can only get. For me, what was interesting is at a young age because of watching people being uh, chased off grasses and uh, the, uh, you know separate entrances for people. The world had for me had for me belachelijk gelijk. And I think, omdat my ma for me had this sense of self I, I didn't take it personally. When my father said to me, you can't go fly in a plane with your brother because you're a girl. You can't go to university because you're a girl. It's a waste of money. You're going to marry some guy. And, you know, it's... You know, I just thought, well, but you're so forgiven. I mean, that is, that is not what it is. So I'm an organic feminist. I didn't read Sleeping with the Enemy or, uh, you know, I didn't come to feminist texts at all. In fact, I still haven't read them. I would kill somebody with one of those books. I've still got them on my shelf. But it was a tremendous a sense of like, well, yeah, but it's a proof. What do you do? I can't even do it. That, that, that. So I do think I have an oppositional personality disorder because I can't learn to waltz either. So the minute you tell me to do something, I immediately say no. And then I have to think about it and go, oh, actually, no, that's not so bad. Um, so my, but my father was a man of his time as well. Um, most men at that time, that's interesting, a lot of women have come to speak to me about their relationships with their fathers yeah. in this book. My father wanted to me, me to be a blonde, blue-eyed, with flexels, macy, that dates is, that yodel and cook and he can be. That's what I've created. And I've always said, yeah, there is a God, you've got a lesbian daughter and two black grandchildren, you yeah. know what I mean? But the conversation, I, if I didn't have that conversation with my father over the years, and as much as it was traumatic for him at times and for me, I don't think he would have reached the point where when he died he was ready to die. Having accepted the Holocaust, having accepted, I think, the deeply existential nature of politics and the position that places us in. Yeah. I needed that from him. It took a long time for him to see that, I think. Uh, but the interesting thing is natuurlijk denial, is ontkenning. Is that, as he said, but this is now a long shot, eh? 
zien jij ook uh, wat, dat, dat iemand zo iemand uh, gerekruteerd wordt en in Zuid-Afrika komt. Het hij, het hij ook gekomen is het net omdat hij denkt, dus ik kan meer verdienen daar. Als in, 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 was, was die, die apartheid van om ook, omdat hij een natie nog was, ook een, een extra aantrekkingskracht? Of is dat een moeilijke vraag? Ik weet niet. Nee, dat is een moeilijke vraag. Nee, ik denk niet, hij is daarom gedink. Nee, ik denk, hij heeft astma gehad. Iemand zei, ga naar nou een warme plek toe en hier was ons. Mijn pa, wat ik nog, ik, het enige wat ik kan zeggen is, mijn pa zijn optreden ten oor zwart mensen was absoluut, uh, respectful. I never saw my father. If the, we, we, we never had people cleaning our home, homes. My mother alles kon gemaakt. En elke dag dan het iemand kom help verf. Uh, en my, my pa so optreden toen die mensen eraf om werk het. En die mensen met wie gewerkt het in die, in die, in die, in die fabriek. En wat hom geskryf het, was absoluut respectful. Unlike Uncle Dari wat gevloek het en geskree op mensen en nog gejaag het. So I think my pa was intrinsically, you know, that is for me the issue that that total collateral damage that, that that your time, or the materialism. So my father is like a, like, a, like a, a beautiful tooth, was impacted by the toxicity of fascism, of, of, what, of the world that shaped him by the time he was 22 years old. I don't think he, he didn't go to therapy, he saw a lot of things in war. I think our 20, 30 year discussion was therapy, um, in a weird way, um, for me and for him. I mean, we would have discussions, I'll tell you one of them in the book, about to Rwanda gebeurde in 1994. Now, look at TV, and we're going to go to the service of the place, and we're going to go to the and now look, and it's a drive for me, and he says, yeah, you see these people, they are complete savages, look what they are doing in Rwanda. So I said, well, your dad, just because they're not listening to Beethoven and reading Schiller, <laughs> while they're killing while people. people. <laughs> and my father wasn't a stupid man. He understood what I was saying in that moment. And the other really, I mean, there were often moments where I would sit opposite him and think, it's so interesting, the trauma in terms of being a perpetrating class, part of the perpetrating class, the trauma of George that I now know, it's easier to love our parents when they die, we forgive them more. Um, he tells me the story about living in Charlottenburg in Berlin, and three doors down is a Jewish family, the Finkelsteins. And I put I sit there, I dag and oh, means I almost have to proud with Fulier, and I go there, 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 and she gives him a biscuit, he can remember the smell, he's painting this amazing portrait, and then he stops for a while, looks out the window, and he says, I wonder what happens to Finkelsteins. <laughs> yeah. En dus besef ik, dat was daar is het deel van mijn pa, omdat hij niet in Duitsland had gebleven na die oorlog en niet geconfronteerd is met wat hij gedaan heeft. Hij uh, split. Hij split uh, trying to hold on to a heimat in a country that no longer existed after 1945. That he was part of a nation of people who lost their heimat, lost everything. <coughs> Uh, how do you live in the world in that existential void with a country that you thought you were fighting for, that you did everything for, uh, is now seen as the polecat and pariah of the world. And in South Africa, I think, um, we have also not, and it's very difficult and explosive conversation to have, because we get defensive as white people when it's pointed out that we need to own what we are. It is in the book, I must say, but I don't know if, if, if a lot of people relate to that, but there's, a, there's not nostalgia, but there's also... Uh, Dus ook om, denk ik, dit, dit geeft mij een beeld van wat het werkelijk geweest is. Er worden ook good times. Er wordt jolling at school. Er wordt het en dan. Zo dus dus uh, dit geeft een, een heel diverse beeld van 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 een era wat toch een beetje dan troublesome is. Nee? Maar ik denk in een eerder in die wereld, zoals als je Jacob Lemieux zijn boek leest, Native mm -hmm. Nostalgia, zou je ook zien dat mensen, you know, geluister naar boxing matches op die radio. Ik heb geluister naar Gerrit Dillier's stem wat oor die wagen vliegt wol kom. Ik kan nie meer. Ik ik hou niet van raak meer nie. Want dit dit was mijn deel van. Ik denk dat die enige zijn Afrikaner wat niet al van hij. Maar elke nacht die kan onder huis zit ik naar daar en braai mensen om ons. Dus is een werkersklas Afrikaner mensen wat raak bij kijken en braai. En mijn pa braai niet als tijd. Zo is braai niet. Ons is hier bier. So this is the African mensen tussen wie ek geblei het. Maar voor ons die nostalgie van mij te doen met. Ik denk niet dat het nostalgie is, maar dat. Ja, nee, ik verstaan. 
wat, die, wat, wat ek vir mense wil sê, dat, dat uh, oor ons in die wereld, en het gaan gebeur met jou in Europa, en het gaan met, uh, in Amerika gebeur, is, wat er nou een soort van nie een volskaals oorlog is nie, word die meld nog afgelever, vlieg hy vlieg nog, um, daar is mense wat verschrikkelijk lei in die omstandighede, maar die, die leven gaan aan, en dit is moeilijk om, om, om jouself te bluf, dat alles oké okay is, um, en ons is thans bezig met die selfde so, die maar in a, jy weet, a, op een ander vlak, um, en jy kan besluit om net te sê, jy weet nie, jy het nie geweet nie, uh, ek en my broer vers, be, het verskrikkelijk baie beklei daarover, um, want hy is, ek kan nie glo, hy kom by die selfde plek as ek nie, ons is polities op... Ja, broer, blij nou in Australië. Ja, dank God. Hy <laughs> um, is wel, uh, jy weet, my broer wil... Hy kom vir die mining in Dawa. Ja, hy is, ja. En hy, jy weet, hy wil uit die Britse paspoort, en hy wil uit Duitse ene, en hy wil uit Portugese ene, maar alles behalwe uit Afrikaanse ene. Ja. Ek kan nie daar, ek wil nie daar, ek, ek, ek is nie Engels nie, ek is nie daar. Want ons, ons ken dit nie, ons sal later praat ook oor wat het beteken vir die skryver en sy omgeving. Dit is nou een ding, as een, as een Belgiese skryver, en ek denk jy had het uitgevind, as jy die boeken skryf het, jou pa het gekom as een as ingenieur vir, vir weapons, En hy het vertel wat hy, wat, het jy dit uitgevind, as jy geskryf het, wat hy gedoen het? Nee, ek het uit, uitgevind, jy het nou met hom gepraat het, die elke keer as ek gaan keir, dan, dan begin ons praat, ek wil net sê, my pa was omtrent so ver af van Hitler, so nummer 1, my, my karma is verskrikkelijk sleg, ek gaan in die hel brand, want my pa was, you know, not even 6 degrees of separation, so ons, ons kom nou by die ander, uh, want hy het een dag, uh, hy was bezig om te leer om uh, uh, Boeing, ach nie, uh, wat het dit, uh, gliders, te maak, en hy het uitgekom, en toe was daar hierdie karre van, wat buiten die opera gestaan het, en daar, wat hy het Hitler eindelijk gesien, in the flesh, en naderhand het my tanny, wat nou nog steeds levendig is, in Berlijn, een boek vir my pa gestuur, de, de kinde des raas, kan sy lees, so dit is een boek oor die vrou, wat gekyk het na Goebbelse kinders, na Goebbels, wat sy, die vrou, wat sy kinders allemaal doodgemaak, haar naam is Hubie, en uh, sy is my Tannie se beste vriendin, so achter in die boek het my Tannie my fotokie geplak van haself met Hubie, so I'm now like closer to, to Goebbels as well maar ek sit hier met my pa en hadder en sê ek vond my, maar eindelijk, hoekom, hoekom het jy gekom na sy taak dan, en wat gaan ander, ek weet jy gewerk my aams ko, jy weet maar jy weet jy het 55 miljoen mense is dood in die tweede wereldoorlog dit is meer mense as wat levendig is in Suid-Afrika vandag, as jy jyself kan insien, dit is een moerse trauma that you survive that, and you come here. So he told me, the, the um, Department of Defense, um, uh, what was it then, uh, Verdediging, he had the plan to get the F1 Belgian uh, Vierwaffen. So come, I was geskoop. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the boeren destijds had enough skills and fairness, so they had to look at the people. We were the first to get the queries. En gebruik, want ons het vaardig hier gehad, ons het winkels oopgemaak en ons het dinge gedoen, want die, 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 die Hollanders het gaan werk by Eskom en jy weet, en die Engels het gaan werk ergens anders, want daar is vachmanne gewees, of vaardig hier gehad. En my pa het toen die machine gecalculate by Armscore, that made the trigger for the first R1 ever manufactured in South Africa, and guess who gave it to on the Armscore floor, this is I here on a Saturday afternoon, verwoerd. Hy die dinge so oorgehandig aan verwoerd. <laughs> ek sit hier daar en ek wel <laughs> no fucking hope in hell <laughs> that I'm ever going to pay okay. this, this so this, 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 this nie baie mense die wat die selfde gevoel daarby kan van die hier die, maar dis dis baie reaksies wat jy krij na vir die boek uh, kan jy, is daar is daar kategorieën, kan jy sê dis dis wat jy net gesê het, dis, dis vrouwens wat sê, ek kan relate relate met jou vir, vir die die strijd tegen uh, die verwachtings, maar is er, is, er ook, uh, is er mense wat ook gepraat het oor, wat ek nou nie die nostalgie wil noem nie, maar die sfeer wat, wat in die jaren dan geweest, as jy jong gewees het in die, in die, in die jaren. Ek dink baie mense, wat interessant is vir my is dat mense kom na die boek toe met hulle eie with their own issues. Uh, die eerste was een Duitse vrou wat baie kwaad met my was, oor ek my pa, gedink het my pa was een natie, en ek het onmiddellik besef Sy is een baie links duidte persoon, maar waar sy in die wereld reis, dink allemaal sy is een nazi. She was angry that I'd done the same. I said, well, do people always think you're a nazi because you're German? She said, yeah, but I'm very left wing. Uh, so I said, yeah, well, we don't think so because if you talk like this, it doesn't sound left wing at all. Um, uh, en baie vrouwens kom praat met my oor hulle verhoudings met hulle paas, want dit is vir, dit is vir my sien nogal een ongelooflike verhouding en ek dink ons hele our, 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 the way we go out into the world and deal with religion, who is a kind of you know, meta picture of 
of our fathers and the way we deal with the world has to do with our relationships with our fathers. And they're, they're, they're really important relationships. Uh, I'm very much like my father, which is quite scary for me, um, which is why we also fought so much. Um, a lot of people, as, uh, white South Africans, younger Afrikaans speaking uh, people tell me they are very grateful because the book they hope will open a conversation with their parents. And what I after the court is very moeilijk for Afrikaans mensen om die geschiedenis te eien, want dit is a, dit is woord beskou as 'n slegte geskiedenis. Dit jy deel is van 'n perpetrating class. Wat hou jy? Wat waar waar wat, wat kan jy vir jou kinders vertel van 'n past waar jy die hele tyd uitgemaak word as 'n perpetrator? And so it's it is a conversation that these people are still having in Germany uh, around uh, um, finding a space where it's not combative or defensive but where you can go back and look at the truth of your situation without becoming a victim. But tell me what you know about Duitsland Prats, so this this journalist of van, van the die Spiegel. Ja. Maar jy my vertel, ek, oh, dit is, van, dit is interessant, dit is die eerste keer wat ek tussen vier Duitsers gesit het waar ek nie met hulle wou beklaai nie. Uh, um, uh, it was an interesting conversation, people, one, one generation slightly older than me, and it's now next year. They had read the book, eh? Ja, en die, die, hulle voel, dit, die selfde ding het in Duitsland gebeur, waar jonger mense nie met hulle ouders kon praat oor die oorlog nie nie, omdat die ouders self nie daar oor kan praat nie. Jy kan jou voorstel, 55 miljoen mense is dood, jy is Duits, jylle wereld sê, jylle, jylle dit opgevolk, is jylle skuld. Um, hulle moet hulle stede uh, herbou, hulle is arm, hulle word, jy weet, uitgeke, jy weet they, they are perpetrating this terrible thing. So, the parents didn't speak about it anymore, they didn't speak about it to their children, so the silence of the past then uh, hit that generation, children of, 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 of Second World War, the older people, and then their children's children. Uh, now dealing with it in a much, much, much more, I think, uh, healthy, healthy way. But the conversation is beginning to happen, where, um, but a lot of the older people don't want to talk about it because it's too traumatic and too real for them, and they don't want to go back to thinking about Dresden being bombed, because because you were seen as the perpetrator, you started Second World War, you followed Adolf Hitler, this is your lot. And for long, I had absolutely no sympathy for my oma had, because she was in Berlin, but my dad died on the 27th of April 1945 when, uh, when Berlin was liberated by the Russians. He died that, that day. And for a very long time, I had absolutely no sympathy for them. I just thought, oh yeah, you're um, But as I've grown older and understood the complexity of politics and, and how it's easier in retrospect to say, you should have done this or you should have done that, all you can do at the end of it all is know the horror and the truth of it and where you fit in. Had you that same feeling for people who also under apartheid lived and that they, they were benefiting from it? Had you that complexity of it? Yeah, I think Afrikaners specifically talk a lot more about it in a role to try and there is of course different conversations that place for the die dasty Steve Hofmeyers and all of that. It isn't one universal conversation, but I find it much more invigorating and interesting because I don't think English speaking, white English speaking South Africans are having this conversation because they don't think they've got anything to account for, which Afrikaners do. And so I think there's a voorstelling with it. I think there's a very geschrijf book where I've geschrijf mensen prada over, of mensen will not daarover praten, maar it wordt definitief by meer onder Afrikaans sprekende mense bespreek, of mense raak kwaad daar maar tenminste praat mense, en Engels mense, niks, en kijk Kardashians, en ek weet nie, doen ander goed. Maar dit nie, van al die reactions, van al die reactions was er ook totaal onverwachte, dat jy, positief of negatief, wat jy... Well, ek is, ek is suspicieus, want ek is, I mean, I've always expected impending disaster any minute, most of my life, I kind of think, well, you know, it's coming. It's been, uh, what's been very interesting from young black people, is who read the book, if they said, yes, this year, a cock education. I thought Bantu education was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Christian national education was worse. I mean, I actually stole my history book by Van Jaarsveld, year half and one year half, that was so slecht. But basis said that the Holocaust was, was fine. You know, and there's a little cartoon of a great white man with a, a, a tail is, and then he takes it and he takes the arme swart people and the arme Indians, and you know. It's an absurd book, it's not you know. It's not an education at all. I mean, my children asked me one day in the car, does the sun, you know, orbit, do, do the planets orbit, and they said, but I don't know anything. Uh, I can I can hear some kind of tell if he saw him do this it is there on the sun. I mean, uh, as far as I can remember, we played with plasticine until the trip. Kind of fucking mix on that, you know. Absolutely, the economics kind of got caught on that. It's like it's just slackers with my geld. So that was by snow. So as far as I can see, from that year, I see here, but you know, it's like you know.
Die, die, die meest specifieke reacties natuurlijk, wat jij uh, als een schrijver, uh, ja, dat is die reacties van die mensen wat jij kent, wat ook in die boek voor mm. Voor mij was het ook, uh, als je oor, ik heb niet nie so baie autobiografische boeken nie, maar het is like, jy weet, as ons het het al gesê, een schrijver is een media uh, vir ander mense. Opeens schrijf je man daar, en dit word nou, is heel te anders. Jy ken ook die story, maar dit word nou iets epical. Het jy, het jy daar met, so jou, jou broer ons met nou wat jou, het jou broer die boek gelees? Ja, maar jy weet, hy is met my broer, hy was met sy daar nie, so, jy weet, hy is ons niks wat ek kan sê, nee. so, ek was baie kwaad het om gewees, omdat hy nie daar was, om vir my te help, en die man, hy besef ek, jy weet, ek voel my, jy besef die boek nie, ok, ja, ja. wel, jy weet, hy het baie min gehad met, met en ek, hy het sy eie issues, ek denk my broer sy grootste issue is, hy het groot gevoerd as een wit man in apartheid Zuid-Afrika, en hy dink, my broer dink rarig die wereld, wendel oor hom, en ek denk, dat is nogal een, dat is nogal een skok as jy uitgaan, en dit is nie so nie, so, uh, my weet nie om te wees in die wereld nie, hy weet nie om, om vrou, I mean, hy, hy sal vir sê, ja, hy sal een vrou klomp wijn koop, dus ek denk, wat is verskrikkelijk, dat jy iemand dronk wil kry, voordat jy jou bed toe vat, I mean, what kind of, can't you pull a chick on your own? I mean, even I can, I don't need to drug someone, I mean, wat is dit met jou, jy weet, so, hy, en hy is baie lief vir geld, en wat, wat ons, my, my ouders het, met my pa, ek het, ek het uitgevind, toe hy afgedreed, het hy 4000 rand de maand verdien, ek weet nie hoe hy ons groot gaan maak het nie, maar my broer, hy vind soort groot Rolex watches, en karre, en, weet, skoene, en, hy weet, hy is, hy hou van geld, hy is een materialist, hy is, en dit is dier my. Dit is duidelijk dat jy nie altyd so baie lief vir jou broer vir is, ja, dit is, die, 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 is daar ook vir die ander, vir my is dit altyd so, die, die mense wat jy ken van vroeger, Ja, 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 daar is mense wat ek nie noem in die boek nie, um, ek noem my pa, my ma, my broer en my kinders, uh, my partners hier daar nie, want it's not her story, uh, in a way, but there is, there, I do name some school friends who were with me, who uh, were part of my drug-fueled 70s attempt at dealing with, and, and you know, I mean, really, I do think that Dacha is a, is a, interesting spiritual drug, I don't drink, um, maar ek rook dag, hy elke nou en dan, en ek sê nou dit vir mense, want allemaal dink, oh, jy gaan pink olifant is, en jy gaan afspring van die berg af, en, weet, as, you know, it's, it's, it, we can have this discussion some other time, I, I, I dislike alcohol a lot, but, um, I do have, I did have, one of my school friends is very angry with me for having written, uh, um, about them, and, but what was so interesting as well, is that she's no longer in South Africa, but the strangest, uh, response was she thinks she's responsible for me being gay mm -hmm. which I think is like I said to you if it wasn't you it would have been someone else which is a very weird way of <laughs> trying to own the narrative I said you hear it so geskapen liefie dit was nie jy nie maar dit is so interessant to mense hulle self probeer centraal maak in jou story wat sy het nou jou hoor sê want dit is nou wat ook die centrale vraag vraag is daar Het jy ook skaam soms, dat jy weet, nou, die werkelijkheid wat jy skryf, is altyd nou net jou werkelijkheid. En dat jy toch ander mense, jy kan nie, jy kan nie, dan moet jy besluit om nie te skryf nie, en dit, dat, of course, we don't do that, we do, we do right. Maar is daar, is daar ook a, a sekere, I don't know, die is die woord, is schroom, is schroom is die woord in Nederland. Well, I'm not ashamed of anything in that book, which is what I told her. Um, I, because she's straight and has children, I think it freaked her out that I mentioned that there was this encounter that was, instigated by her. Uh, well, sorry, that's what happens. So be careful. If you instigate with anything with anyone, it might end up in a book. Uh, and I, then I actually said to her, I don't, I'm not apologizing to you. I'm not ashamed of anything in this book. And if you are, you must find out why you think you are uh, uh, ashamed of anything. Um, for me, interesting enough, um, part of the impetus behind the story is it's my revenge on the 20th century. I really, really didn't like the 20th century for a very long time. And then the 21st century arrived. Uh, I mean, if you look, I've got ads in there, which are just, I mean, you know, doctors that say, rook cigarette. More doctors smoke yeah, more than any other cigarette. Uh, it was, it, 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 it was absolutely a dumb, you know, century. I mean, and for me, it was constantly saying to me, but excuse me, uh, we only had iceberg letters on 2,000 islands. Yeah, then drink it was so early, didn't I? Of we drink coke, letters and letters of coke. And it's it, absolutely stupid. You know, it was okay. eight pies and... <laughs> Niemand eet gezond, nee. I mean, it's okay. anyway. For us, for us, for us, of uh, the, that's the people who heard what I wanted to ask. We had now, finally, for the title, we had Hitler verwoord Mandela and me. We had you, gehad, uh, Hitler verwoord. Vertel een beetje over Mandela, wat betekent Mandela voor jou? Nou, hier. 
uh, well, uh, I think Mandela uh, was a necessary binding force at the time. I think Mandela was out of touch with many things. I think Mandela was a monk, he was a spiritual being who actualized in a cell on Robben Island, separated from the rest of us, and that's the tragedy. He was, he was unseen, and for many years was the lodestar, was the so what, 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 is is he, what, he, what does he symbolize or means for you? For me, I never thought I would see Nelson Mandela walk out of that jail, number one. To be able to, to have witnessed that as a South African is phenomenal. And I think he embodied, I feel for me, the weight of, and it's not only due to Mandela, but there was something in that ability to, to come out of this situation and say to all of us, just get on with yourselves, you're, you're beautiful, uh, you have to make this work, stop doing this to each other. There's an intimacy to the violence of apartheid, uh, which continues till today. But something about Mandela's arrival and, and release of this, um, catapulted me into the 21st century. I can be who I am because of him. I can but as, I, as I hear speaking, I, As I hear you speaking, it's, it's something from the past. It's not that you look at nowadays politics, you get no Zoom money, and you think, what, what would Mandela would have said? It, it, it's, it's something of the past. Yeah, I think, I think many of us think you can hold on to something that is of its time later on, but it's no longer that. I mean, Oliver Tambo was as important as, and strange enough, the ANC today, this is the year of Oliver Tambo. I keep on saying it's the year of O.R. Tambo International, where the Guptas are trying to arrive with, believe, with pistachio nuts, and the hawks and the, and, the, uh, uh, and the saps are fighting each other for drugs, while we sit on our... Uh, so that's the reality of it all. I, I think as a symbol at that time, coming out of a terrible trauma, he represented something of the higher moral ground, which we know no, nobody has that anymore anywhere in the world. Uh, and Trump is... So we're living in a, a completely... Yeah, we know we're living in a shifting geopolitical... Uh, change that none of us quite know or understand. You know, democracy is something you have to fight for and keep working at. I didn't think that would be the case, first of all. So I think a lot of us didn't. Uh, especially also my friends in the ANC didn't think we would still be fighting at this point mm -hmm. right up to now. I didn't think I would be working 12 hour days at the age of 56 uh, doing the same sort of shit that I was doing back then. Um, except the difference is that I have no fear that I'm going to be arrested without being charged. I can say what I like to whom I like. Um, I, can, I don't feel under threat at all and I'm flying very close to the flame. And that is the difference. And I go to the committee meetings at Parliament and I cannot believe the extraordinary ability of our younger politicians, whether they you Julius Maleva or, or my money or other people that we now get to know because we see these televised, the SABC things, that democracy is something that you have to keep working at. And it is thrilling for me to be in that space. And there's a lot that's wrong. Okay. But there's a fight back, and it was that interesting, I was in, a, in, a, in a, a taxi the other day, not an Uber, a taxi, we're a Zimbabwean who's probably going to be sent back, if, if it's got to do with the nationalistic ANC home affairs at the moment, uh, said to me what is amazing for him as, a, as, as someone who's in South Africa, who's not of South Africa, is that when he watches that, what a message that sends out to the rest of the continent about democracy. And that it is a lesson in a way. I just love the fact that we murder each other in Parliament because that's who we are. This nonsense of coming in with goodies and that is them. You can't get the Japanese murder of my car. I'll stand still. I am massive. You know, that's who we are. What's wrong with that? That's our culture. Or skiers of my car. We can't pray. We see English men when we sit with tea coffees and say, "Order, order." All of our member. You know, we still have those ridiculous traditions that are there, and they close their face. Interestingly enough, if you look at you know what Julius Malema has done, has changed the narrative of politics. I mean, Trump uh, is is the epitome of that globally. That that uh, a protocol. It's an international phenomenon. It's an international yeah. phenomenon. That old. You were first. Way. You were first. We were first. <laughs> you always are. <laughs> you know. So um, we should we should. Uh, it is a okay. frightening time, but uh, but I think our democracy is in good hands, mm -hmm. and I'm optimistic. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for the book as well. well so. Donkey, uh, donkey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maar we moeten ons gaan vragen. Is dit dus die die gehoor of dat er iemand die dares to ask you a question? Quite intimidating, you know. Quite intimidating. You can't, you know. Is het verschrikkelijk goed voorbereid, hè? Ja, heel te makkelijk. Ja. Tien minuten gepraat. Maar voor mij is het belangrijk. You always have to know the world you're living in, otherwise it happens to you without you knowing. Okay. Dat was de vraag. Is er is er een mic? Ja, is er een mic tegen? I first want to know your full name and your profession. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to admit that I'm 
mentioned my profession. Oh, no, okay, okay. My name is Elaine Parabal. Put it a bit closer to me. Okay. okay. I've Thank read you. your book and I'm extremely impressed with the quality of the book. In, uh, I've read your book about Addison and about Kami and Monique. Closer. In the mind. Closer. Closer. Yeah, that's okay. it, yeah. And um, this book, it, it really, I was um, amazed it? at the quality of your book. And uh, But the one thing that I've wondered about is why were you so angry growing up? Yeah. Well, the world was a, wherever I turned, whatever it is I wanted to do, I was met with a, a kind of a resistance where people would say, but you can't do this. You can't do that. Uh, this is not, you can't, you know, you can't do this, you can't do Afrikaans, you can't do English, you can't do this, you can't do this. And I just kind of, I don't know what that was. Um, I just felt, well, it's unfair. There was a sense of injustice and it's unfair. And, and I don't know where that comes from, the sense of that, why are you chasing those people off the grass? It's unfair. And perhaps being a gay woman uh, uh, gave me insight into being othered. Um, that's why my brother, I think, unfortunately doesn't have that advantage. He was part of the mainstream. When you're part of the overall narrative and you're not questioning and no one's pointing at you and saying you are something, you don't question it. So I feel sorry for him because it's very hard. My friend Rihanna is very hard to in the world. Te beweeg, want hij is groot gemaakt als Afrikaner zien, hij heeft gegaan naar volkspelen, hij heeft gegloven in de kerk van C, hij heeft, hij heeft mij gekend als vriend. Ik heb hem gezegd, die geweer die ANC is in 1912 gestig. Hij heeft die geweer niet. He didn't know the history of his own country. Well, was, he, was your brother in the army? Yes, my brother went to the army as well, yeah, he went. Uh, didn't resist, went to the Air Force and spent a lot of time in the Air Force like his papa, which is what men often do. But, you know, my saddest conversation was with Rian after 1994 when he phoned me and he said, Marian, I don't know how to do this in my own land. I'm not afraid of people. I'm not afraid of people. They're going to do what I'm going to do with them. And this is for me painful, in a way, that people, and this is also part of my past problem. Are you without any politics, without any culture, without any God's sense, without any good thing, 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 Die goed wat jy sê, jy is een vrou, jy moet dit wees, of dat wees. Uh, maar ons leven nou in een wereld waar, jy, weet, jy kan kies om nie te weet nie, of jy kan kies om jezelf te bevry. Um, maar nie altyd, as jy in Kalitsja woon in een huis sonder water en sonder enig iets, dan is daar baie min cases. Baie min cases. Thank you for your question. Is there another question? Is there nog vraag? Hallo, Marian. Ek het twee vraag. Die eerste een, wat is meaningful um, conversations with your father that you had it. Um, and you write about um, your reis of via um, travels um, in the late 20s. So what did you say was the um, your word geshaped and geworden it ultimately? Um, I think my most meaningful conversation was with my father the day before he died. Where I was able to say to him and I felt quite ill-equipped, but by that point I had spent a lot of time with him. Because when you're dying, you need someone just to be there with you. Uh, we, uh, we're not really right at the end. And those conversations were, for me, the most meaningful and able to, I think, let him release. I uh, thanked him for who he was. I said he fucked up for one year, but that, that um, my brother and I could look after ourselves, that he'd been a good father, um, that everyone he loved was where he was going. Um, I'm not religious, and so I said to him, all I can say is where you're going now, you were before. And I could see that all of that comforted him. So it was a very profound moment of finding myself this uh, dumb, stupid person in an extreme, it was an ars morendi. My father's death for me was uh, profound in that it has taught me, in a very Woody Allen-esque sort of way, how to deal with my own death. And we don't do that in, in society. We put away people who are dying. And I think it's, um, I, I have a, a great feeling and affinity for those who are dying because it's an extraordinary journey. We'll all do it. We're all scared of it. And my father showed me that we don't have to be scared of it. So that was the most profound. I haven't written about that necessarily. Um, my travels were <laughs> when I arrived in Holland for the first time. I had never been in Europe. I had heard of it because, you know, my people were from there. And I was just really, that was 1988. I was quite traumatized. It was a very bad year in South Africa. It was, it was a low-grade civil war. 
when I arrived in Amsterdam, and one of the first things I saw was white people cleaning the streets, which was like, whoa. Uh, but also, I just remember that every time I've gone back to Amsterdam since then, I've seen the same thing. But it was so, it was, I drove past the uh, art museum, and there was this massive painting of a erect penis going into a vagina, and I was sitting on the, on the tram, and I looked out the window and I went, my hot knee. You know, it was, it was like I came from an egg and was, you know, went out into, then I saw people rollerblading naked through the streets or wearing cardboard. And I thought, is this freedom? Is this, is this what it means to live in a place where you don't uh, see soldiers everywhere all the time and you're not afraid of a, rest, a bomb going off in a wimpy bar where if you're a black person you're not afraid the cops are going to come and round you up and I had been, my architecture, my internal architecture had been so shaped by the tension that I found the free world overwhelming. I couldn't make a decision about what play to go to in London. And there was too much going on. I thought, I want to go back home. There's very little going on. Thank God for the cultural boycott. You know, I want to all go to Russia where you could just eat borscht and vodka and this, but you know, David, it was to make the field. The field was just um, a pinball machine to be us. The trainer, trams, taxis, men, a clearer. You got jeans, you Levi's, but you couldn't equip me. So they were like a relic for me, a freedom. It was mad. It was insane. My little head exploded. <laughs>